start. It's not going to happen. So then what happened was um, I started a business and my mentor told me, who was a professor of entrepreneurship, you have to go to these business events. You have to go and learn from people because you don't know anything. So I said, cool. Every single event, to, uh, event I went to was boring and just horrific. And I was like, all right, well, this is just a price you have to pay to be successful. But then one event, there was this incredible speaker. He was just like going across the stage and he had great content and he was like telling stories. And for the first time in my life, I had this feeling that was like, I want to do that for the rest of my life. Like as soon as I saw it, I just knew whatever this was, this is what I wanted to do. But I was like 22 and I was like, who's going to listen to me? Well, actually, I was 19 at the time. And I was like, well, no one's going to listen to me. And then a couple of years go by and then I, I kept going to events and, and running that business. And I met another speaker and I went up to him and I said, listen, man, in like 20, he was like 50 years old. I said, in like 20, 30 years, watch out for me because I'm going to be doing what you're doing. And he said the simplest advice that changed my life, honestly. And he just said, well, why not just do it now? And I was like, but like, what? Like, don't I have to be like 40 years old? Don't I have to be like a multi-bajillionaire? Don't I have to be like, you know, the greatest things in sliced bread? And he's like, no, he's like, if you can help people and you have a message, all you have to do is find the people who you want to help. And at the time, since I just graduated college, the student market is where I put a lot of my time and energy because I understood, you know, the student life cycle. So I spent a lot of time speaking that I still speak in that market. I very much love it. And the, the fast forward of it is 48 states I've spoken in, over a thousand paid presentations, uh, five countries, you know, multiple seven figure businesses and different niches in speaking. And it's been, it's, been, it's been awesome. And the reason why I got into coaching is for two reasons. The first is I realized like, even if I speak every single time, like every presentation I wanna do, I'm only gonna do like 0.0000001% of what's out there. And actually I was just having to, uh, I was just talking to you, Tanya, about this. When you spoke at that conference, the money conference, um, I looked it up and I was like, I never heard of it before. And I was like, there's so much, out there like i've been doing this for years and you spoke at a conference i know i'm constantly hearing about new niches new conferences new associations new groups so it, one i realized if i want to help people i have to help more people and the reason why i resisted coaching for a very long time is because i hate like 99 percent of speakers i've ever met like 99 percent of speakers <laughs> I just dislike their personalities. Many of them are very egotistical. Many of them are very self-serving. Many of them are like, look how great I am and how much I have learned and I am bestowing upon you this one. It's like, they care more about themselves than the message. And I was like, you know, there's like four or five people I dig, everybody else I don't wanna mess with. But then a friend of mine said, well, well, what if you could help people who thought like you and there were more people like you who thought about service first, helping people. And it wasn't an ego thing, it was a service thing. And I was like, well, you know, how do you say no to that? So that's how we get to where we are today. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I concur on the service part. And I, you know, I, how many people in the chat have been coached before? How many of you have actually hired a coach before? I'm very interested in that because I have hired coaches where I'm like, what am, what, what am I paying you for? Like. It, it became a thing where their heart wasn't in the work, their heart was in the money that was in the, rather than being in the actual work. And that was a big difference. And that's why, you know, I, I like to um, introduce people to my audience, but like when it comes like to co-signing people and actually saying like, no, I'm going to do a webinar with Aurel. It is because when I tell you my experience with you was literally, you left it all on the floor. Like you left it, you were like, here, it's up to you to do what you want with this. And I want to give people some of those gems and we're gonna dig into those gems. So some people have hired coaches, some people have coaches, um, but it, it really can be transformative when you're working with the right coach. Cleo, Cleo said, I've hired a mentor and a business coach, but haven't had a coach for public speaking. Um, Q said, I need a coach. Yeah, and so it's one of those things like, I started to see a transition and, and once, once I hired a coach for my business and that's how I was like, okay, it's time for me to hire a speaking coach. And so um, I'll get into the, the first question. And I think that a lot of people, we live in a world where you have access to so much, so much information. A lot of us have done so many things. We're millennials. So we've had multiple different types of jobs. We've had different lives. Most of us have different lives before we turn 30. 
we know and have done so much and we can speak to so much. So given that, how does a person decide Oh, before I get into this, I just want to let you guys know, we're not doing slides. Like this is like me and Aurel, like straight up information. We're not doing slides and all that stuff leading you down this. And what would you do? Like, we're not doing that. We're giving you straight up information and things that you can act on. So the question is, going back to my question, is how do you decide what to speak on when there's so many things that you know about and can speak on? Right. So it's a really, really great question. And it's something that plagued me for a very, very long time. Because it's like, all right, I can talk. In the beginning... I was doing like everything, right? I was like, I'm gonna do money management. I'm gonna do interview skills. I'm gonna do public speaking skills. I'm gonna do leadership skills. I'm gonna do, and what happened was I was just putting a lot out there and I was like, I don't want, I was like, I don't know, right? Like, I don't know what at first was my thing. So there's a few things I've learned that's gonna help people deal with how to figure it out, right? The first thing is you can simply create presentations for everything that you would want to talk about, right? So let's say you're like, oh man, I want to talk about, um, you know, finances and I want to talk about health and I want to talk about fitness and I want to talk about this and this and that, right? Like whatever it is, just make a list of all of them, right? Then you create a title. Here's what my title would be. Here's what my description would be. And what happens is you put out that information, right? And, and we can get into how you put it out and who you put it out to. And you see what do people resonate with? You know, what do, what do people say? Yes, this is what I want. Because what you think you want, what you think you can speak on may not be what people want. So the easiest thing is don't try to box yourself in. Just create this general list, right? That's option one. Option two is you ask yourself, which is to me the most important question, where is the money right now, right? And it's a very big question because right now I might want to be a speaker on fitness. Let's say like I really care about fitness. But for me, I'm like, I have no idea how to turn that. I don't know who's going to pay me for fitness. Like I might have to be an Instagram model. And I don't want to be an Instagram model. I don't know how to do that. But if I can do anything, and these are important topics, if you do anything that's called leadership, if you can do anything that's success skills, if you do anything that's like culture or diversity, right? Those topics literally get booked all the time. So one of the secrets that I did in the beginning is I became a leadership speaker. And it was simply because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I could do leadership. And then that was a big enough umbrella that I was able to try out the different presentations and try out the different things under that. For example, if I want to talk about the importance of fitness, I can turn it into goal setting using fitness as an example to help you reach your leadership goals. Right, so you can still talk about fitness, but it's under this umbrella of leadership. So ideally you wanna find what are the markets people are booking in. The third thing, which is also super important, and I can't stress this enough, you have to talk about something that you have credibility in. If I, yeah, I remember I saw this one speaker and I almost like, was like, man, like I just, she, she, was, she was telling people, I'm gonna teach you how to be a millionaire by teaching you all the, the money lessons that I never knew, and that's why I'm not a millionaire. If I would have known what you are about to learn, I would have already been a millionaire. So, I'm, and I was like, you can't, you don't have any credibility on that, right? Like, you right. can't, you can't teach about it. So, if you look at all the things you're passionate about, you look at the areas in where people are actually booking people, and you look at the areas that you have credibility in, you're going to start seeing the the small list, and then ultimately when you start getting booked, you start realizing, wow, there's a lot in this that's getting booked and nothing over here. And then you just weed and cut those out and just throw them away. I, and so that was one of the things that was really helpful for me. And I really want to, um, if you're okay with this around, can we have maybe two or three or have some people just throw out the subjects that they want to speak to? Um, yes, Q, yes, Q, this will be available to watch later. But I would love to have people write in the, com the comments what you're thinking you want to speak to or yep. what, at, what subject you're an expert in. And Arel, let's tie that back to the overarching, like, and how that could tie to someone that could pay them. I want people to understand that because a lot of people don't realize that correlation. I remember I was talking to a woman and she was like, you know, I can, I, you know I've had hardships and so-and-so and so on. And I want to speak to hardships. And I was like, we got to figure out how to tie that into something that people will pay for. That is, that is, um, a, you know, that is a financial, like you have a actual bottom line for that. Or someone's like, I'm going to book this mm -hmm. person. So here yeah. we go. We have 
Um, this is an in interesting one. Uh, let's start with Black maternal health education. Okay. Who would be the ideal buyer of that, or how does that tie to a broader um, topic that they could get paid to speak on? Right. So whenever you look at it, whenever I look at a topic, what's going to help me decide if I'm going to do it is I got to ask myself, is there a group of people that might have a budget for it? So if you're wanting to go after mothers, that's a totally different market. But let's say you wanted to go after corporations that were having programs for stay at home, mom, not stay at home, mom, excuse me, maternity leave, right? So now you have these HR programs. So HR would be really, really good for that as an example that are dealing with putting together these packages for their employees. If you put this as, I'm gonna position this as a way for HR programs to better serve their mothers. And specifically, if you wanted to, you know, black mothers, what I would encourage you to do by the way, and, and this is totally a choice, like I, I don't know you, so you have to decide what feels most authentic to you. I would have one for mothers in general, and then I would have a, a like a, a niche one, right? Because you can get brought in to do a keynote to all of the women, and then you can do a workshop for a specialized group. And that's totally fine. If you just niche it, you might find it harder to get the ball rolling. And then as the ball starts rolling, you can always move into it. So you want to look for who, who are the people that benefit from my message and who ideally has, has the budget, who has the money. So the HR people, the people who deal with... Um, women who are going on maternity leave, creating something for them is amazing. Like uh, there's a great group, Bacardi, uh, alcohol company. They do a lot with female empowerment, right? So if you found a female empowerment niche and many, many corporations nowadays are doing female uh, empowerment, I'm seeing it everywhere. And I've not spoken at it because I'm a male, but I've seen many of these. If you can say, I'd like to do a workshop at this female empowerment for the people who are thinking about uh, maternity leave in the future or currently mm. pregnant, then that's going to be something that's really powerful. So that's how you start thinking about who has the money, who could this benefit, and then how do I tie into it? I got, I've got two more for you, Ro. I want to do two more. Okay, yeah. so love, dating, relationships, and human connection. Who has the money for that? Okay, so colleges spend a ton of money on safe sex, healthy relationships, right? There is new orientation new student orientation at colleges, right? So I want you to imagine you got a bunch of hormonal teenagers for the first time going away and being alone together. Um, the amount of unhealthy relationships, the amount of uh, sexual deviance that happens on college campuses, unfortunately, is super high. So colleges never want to be in a position where um, they're like, if there's like a sexual assault or, or rape or something horrible like that, the first question people are going to ask them is, what have you done about this? Well, they can say, well, we're educating our student body. We brought in this person. And there's a lot of people who, who do really well in that niche. The other niche for that, which is actually really good, is the military. So okay. believe it or not, there's a lot of sexual challenges in terms of unhealthy relationships, rape, that kind of stuff, in the military. Um, also, a lot of suicide in the military it doesn't get talked about a lot. But if you can help with suicide rates in the military, you will, you can go anywhere you want with that because it's a huge problem. But anyway, as an example, if you can say, hey, I'm going to come in and I'm going to talk to the troops about, hey, you're going to be deployed. You know, you don't have to be a military person yourself. You're just saying you're going to be in this environment. Let's, ha let's talk about consent. Let's talk about when you know things are bad. Let's talk about how to get out. So the military does tons of programming for things like that. So that those are two examples. Like the, and just relationships in general, because sometimes it's not it, like interpersonal relationships. Um, that's important in any niche, but you're right. The military, I never even thought about the military as a speaking, um, oh, as an opportunity to speak. And with them. military, you get one contract, you... You rolling, you in. Rolling. And we rolling. actually have Karen in here. So Karen's my cousin. Um, Karen is actually the first black female hurricane hunter. Um, and so, yeah, she's in the military. And so like, I know you already have that relationship, Karen. There's so many people out here that I know and love. Um, let me just get one more. Um, let's say Melissa says wellness and work. Um, and yeah, so let's say wellness and work. Who's a good client for that? Or how do you branch that into a broader topic? Mm -hmm. I would say that's more about stress, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Stress. That is one of the big issues that happens with, with businesses, for example, is they deal with lots of change and lots of change deals with lots of stress. 
So if you can talk about how change affects stress and how wellness affects productivity, um, the easiest way to think about it is I'm gonna give you the category for school because there's a school speaking and then there's a, a business speaking. For business, if you can show how you can increase sales, how you can decrease cost, or how you can increase productivity, you're speaking business's language. Let's right? write those like, down. Let's write those down, guys. Yes. So it's increase sales, decrease costs, improve productivity, right? So when I look at wellness at work, I think about increased productivity. So you can talk about how many people are disengaged, how, much, how many people take sick days, how many people are uh, creating all of these X challenge, Y challenge, and all that kind of stuff, right? So you can talk about all the productivity drops that are happening and how if you can create a program that, that affects that, it will increase productivity and you bring in some stats to prove that it's true. Now people are going, all right, we need to bring this in because this is an issue, right? Um, on the school side, college, high school, if you can do anything about involvement, like getting students involved, it's huge because uh, student apathy is just a big issue nationwide, right? So if you can do how you get kids involved, how you can increase grades or leadership skills and how you can decrease dropout. Like retention is big because it's numbers. It's how they get their checks. It's how they get their standards. It's how they get their rating. So if you can come in and say, Hey, programs like this are going to help them stay in school. And again, it could be wellness related, right? Like people in bad relationships, like leave school because they're not, things aren't going well, like at home and they can't focus on school if they're worrying about, you know, abuse or, or anything horrible like that. So if you can show there's a correlation between the work you do and increasing any of those areas, now you're speaking your client's language. But if I just come in and say, oh, I do wellness and work, or I come in, I, I do you know, money management, they're gonna be like, so what? But now if I'm speaking your language, now it's interest and it's, oh, we've never taken this angle before. Mm -hmm. That's great, let's do it. Or, oh, we need to do more of that and we're not doing that because we wanna increase. So if you understand how to speak their language, it becomes much easier. Yeah, definitely. And we have one question here. And the person was like, how did you get your first speaking engagement? I'll start with that, how I got my very first one. And then I'll let you share that too. Um, my first speaking engagement. So my first speaking engagement actually was not paid. Um, it was an unpaid engagement. I saw someone was having an event in Brooklyn, New York. And I just reached, I DM'd her and I said, hey, I see you have this upcoming event. I'd like to speak at it. My reason for doing that was because I wanted people to start to see me as a speaker. So mm -hmm. even though I wasn't getting paid, no one else knew that in my audience. They just knew that I was speaking at this location. And so that was my first one. And then by the time my next opportunity came around, I was able to say, oh yeah, I just spoke at this. And my actual, my first paid speaking engagement was at the, um, I was a panelist for Circle of Sisters in New York City for Prudential. They hired me as a panelist um, there. And so I do a lot of corporate opportunity, a lot of corporate opportunities for speaking. And then I do schools as well. But because I did that free speaking engagement, it gave them, it made them, it, they trusted me more. But they said, oh, okay, we see these pictures of her out here speaking. She speaks. She speaks. Yeah. And we pay her to speak. She gets paid to speak. They didn't know. I didn't make any money. So that was my first one is I jumped onto someone's event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna quote a, a ludicrous line here. So I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go old school here because it just it's always stood out to me. I don't even know what song it is, and it's probably not even a popular song. But ludicrous has this line that says, "Everybody's trying to run down and buy one car. I'm trying to walk down and buy them all." Right? And that's exactly what you're saying, Tiny. And that's exactly right. If you want to say, "How do I get my first speaking in?" Specifically, how do I get paid? No one is gonna pay you if you don't have a website. If you don't have videos of you speaking, if you don't have pictures of you speaking, if you don't have other people co-signing that you are good, the, you're gonna at most get paid like 50 bucks or someone's gonna buy you a hamburger or you know they'll pay for your gas at most, right? Because why would I put my, this is what speakers don't get and this is the, the mindset that's super important, right? the person booking you is how you have to think about everything. Not, most people think as a speaker, how do I get booked? It's the wrong mindset. The right mindset is what do event planners need? What are they looking for, right? So think of it like this. I'm an event planner and Sandy comes up to me and says, Aurel, you should pay me to speak. 
Okay, cool. You got $2,500 as your speaking fee. Okay, cool. Uh, let me see your website. Oh, I don't have a website. Okay, cool. Let me see your video. I don't have a video. Let me see some pictures. I don't have any, why am I going to believe you're worth $2,500? I'm not. So I cannot stress this enough. If you want to start getting speaking engagements, speak for free to get video and pictures of you speaking, get up a very basic website. Like, I mean, you could get it up on, you know, click funnels, or you can get it up on, you know, Weebly or whatever it is like, it's so simple to build a website. In fact, if you don't have one, like it's really easy to get something simple. Squarespace or, is a good starting spot. Squarespace. Squarespace is great. Yeah. Squarespace is a great builder, right? Or you got to make your Instagram page like related to speaking and you push people to an Instagram site or a Facebook page, but it has to have speaking. If I got no pictures of you, so then people say, how do I get my first free speed engagement? It's so simple. These are the three places I would start, right? Number one, call up your local high school. Everyone's got local high school, right? You call them up and say, hey, my name is Bruna, right? And I live in the area and I wanna give back to the students in the area. I would love to do a free presentation on this subject. Is that something we can schedule? Because I think it's really gonna help them achieve X, Y, and Z. The school's gonna go, oh my God, yeah, how, where, how do we figure this out? Because they love bringing in outside voices to impact people, right? Now, if you know a teacher or you know a principal, way easier if it's a warm conversation. If you're more interested in businesses, what you do is you contact your local chamber of commerce, right? The chamber of commerce is the hub of all businesses in your area. So you contact them and say the same thing. I would love to speak about wellness or I'd love to speak about healthy relationships or taking ownership of your life, whatever it is. I'd love to do a program at no charge to your members because I want to give back more to my local business community. They will probably say yes, be, you know, as long as you're not like, you know, they, they have to Google you and something has to show up an Instagram page or Facebook. Like if nothing shows up, like you might be an ax murderer and they're not going to bring you in. So if you don't have anything, you're going to have to like go in person and network and meet people and say, I would love to do an event at no cost just to give back. And then when you go and you get it, you get pictures of you speaking and people laughing <laughs> and you speak it, right? You get Are video people testimonials. Thinking? People like. Yeah, people doing that one. That's my favorite. You got, it's got, you got to look interesting because if you take pictures, sometimes people take pictures and people in the audience is like this. And it's like, why would you put that on like any, like it looks horrible. Don't do that. So the first thing you do is you, 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 you speak for free so you can speak for a fee. That's the very, very first step because then you can, like you said, Tanya, leverage the, the, the other content and the other, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, assets as a way to get in front of people. We can talk about how to get in front of people and all that. I love that you said speak for free so that you can speak for a fee. Because yeah, yeah we all started, even when I started writing, I started writing pretty much for free. I think someone paid me $50 an article. And now I don't write an article for anybody for less than $600. Like it, it is not happening. And it, even then it's a passion project if I'm writing an article for that amount of money. Um, but we all have to start somewhere. And so like most people, they just want to get paid out the door. And wow. I got to stress this. This is a huge thing that just drives me nuts about people who first get started. There is this weird mindset about, and it's a money thing. And I just, I don't get it because successful people don't think like this. And unsuccessful people think like this all the time. And it drives, is, is fascinating to me. Unsuccessful people go, I don't want them to take advantage of me for speaking for free. I don't want them. They're not going to take advantage of me. They're going to have to pay me. Like, who are you? Who are, no one knows who you are. You, why, why you think you hear when you really hear, right? Like know where you are on the totem pole. If they're contacting you, then yeah, you're going to speak for a fee. That's how it works, by the way. If they contact you, you definitely going to get paid. If you contacting them and that's the only way you're going to get anything coming in, you might have to do some stuff for free because you're just not there yet. So just humble yourself and know that the most successful people are service oriented. The most successful people will do tons of speaking for free because yeah. it always leads to fee. It always, but if you're doing like your grandmama's backyard or you're doing like your church's picnic, like that's just give back. You ain't going to get no business from that. But if you can <laughs> be in front of back. business professionals, you can get booked. Yeah. And um, I will add to that because um, Bruna asked, she said, um, well, she gets booked for a lot of panels, but they don't necessarily ask. And so since we're talking about money, they don't necessarily 
um, offer a speaking fee, sometimes panels won't because panels don't necessarily require as much work on your part. Panels, a lot of times you show up, you answer some questions. Certainly, speaking, yeah. And I think I, I did a thread on this on social media. There's a difference. There is a keynote where you are carrying the conversation and you were there to motivate the audience. And that takes a lot of energy and a lot of prep out of you. There's a workshop speaker where you're leading a workshop and you're guiding someone through actionable items and actionable steps. And then there's a panel where you show up or a fireside where you show up and you answer questions. Yeah. Those all are different rates. And sometimes you might not get paid for a panel because they don't see it as you um, have to do as much work to prepare. But the good thing about going into a panel is you're still going to get into a room full of people. So for me, I can capitalize off of a free panel because I'm going to have an offer in mind. So we have some people in here who are doulas. If you're speaking on a free panel as a doula, you probably have potential clients in there. Actually, the birth center that I go to, I saw her on a panel and then went and hired her as my lactation consultant because she was on a panel and she was speaking for free. So sometimes your payment is not necessarily up front on a panel. Your payment is on the back end. And yes. another thing that I've done is if I'm speaking on a panel and it's not paid, okay, well, do you have a, can I, can I vend? Can I sell my books afterwards? Because after I speak on a panel, people are going to go buy my books. I'm going to have something that I can sell. People will be like, you know, how can we get more? I'm going to be in the back selling books. And I might make my speaking fee in book sales that, you know, and somebody else on the panel didn't bring anything to sell. And so sometimes there's a way to get paid outside of the organizer on a panel. Um, yeah. And then another way I've gotten paid is asking for an honorarium. Um, so maybe they don't have a speaker's fee, but then I ask for an honorarium. I've even had some organizers be like, what's an honorarium? I mean, like, it's just, you know, a donation for my time. It's a, re it's, reduced, it's a reduced speaking fee. Normally I would charge you, say, $7,500. But because I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart, I'm going to charge you $750. And like, they're like, oh my God, that's a significant discount. Let's come up with it. Like, let's figure this out. Mm -hmm. You're just getting started. Your honorarium might be $50. It might be to cover your gas to get there and back. But it's something as a value for your time. And I'll tell you what, I'll give you just a little, like, this is a little, like, super, super, super secret ninja move I did back in the day. Um, when I was on panels, um, and, I, and there was either a professional photographer or someone I knew, you know, I gave them a camera, take some photos. If someone asks a question, I would make it a point to stand up and walk to the front of the stage to, to answer the question so I can get a couple of photos that made it look like I was giving a keynote, right? <laughs> so I'd be in the back like this, right? I'd be chilling and I'd go, you know what? That's a good point. I want to get close to you to answer that question. And is it, is it you right there? Okay, perfect. Here's what I want to say about that. And I know my boy's taking a couple photos and then I sit back down, but then the photo look like I'm giving a keynote, right? <laughs> So you got to do what you got to do in the beginning. <laughs> like, you got to do what you got to do. That's what I did. Nobody knows up here with me. <laughs> that's a good tip, though. That, that's a real thing. So you can, and most of the time, they're going to have a photographer there. Some events are going to have their own photographer there. They're like, ooh, he's really giving, he's really giving value. Let's get this moment. And you're going to get that professional yes. photo of you delivering that, <laughs> you know, talking to that audience member. So that's gold. That's, see, this is the kind of gold, guys, that you get from around, things that you don't think about. Um, so let's, we have one more question. Well, someone said, how can we see this later? The replay will be available. Um, I'm new to using Zoom, so I might have to download it and upload it somewhere else and send it, but you will have the replay by tomorrow. Um, so we'll, make it, we'll send it out. And Nadia asked really quick, are there people that only do workshops? Yeah, there are people that only do workshops. There are people, especially if you're on the corporate if you're speaking primarily to corporate organizations, like I have a friend, she has an organization called Bossed Up or a company called Bossed Up. And it's about helping women beat burnout. And she specifically goes and does workshops or workshop series for organizations on helping their employees beat burnout. So, um, and the per, per, that boosts productivity and helps with um, like job satisfaction and so forth. So that's the language she's speaking to jobs when they and to companies when they hire her, but she solely does workshops. She's not really a keynote speaker. Yeah. And you know, one thing that's a really great distinction to understand. So, and, and we, we, we're going to put something together for, for everyone here. That's really, really special. Right. But there's a thing that I have called the true speaking success system, right? It's an online course that goes over a lot of different things. One of the things we talk about is the difference between a keynote, a workshop, a day long training, right? And, and a panel, right? These, these distinctions are very important because a keynote might be 45 minutes or 60 minutes, 
right? A, a workshop might be two hours. So a keynote might be in front of like 500, 600 people where a workshop might be like 20 people, 30 people, 40 people, right? Where a panel is you with other people and a day long training might be like 12 people and you're doing it for eight hours, right? So the skill set and how you approach those are all totally different. Like you might have to have more, like in a workshop, there's more, all right, I want you to write this down and reflect on it. Now turn to the person next to you. It's called a pair and share. What did they say? What did you say? Now someone come up to the, so like you feel space with interaction, where in a keynote, you may not have the time to do all of those things. You're just sharing a, a big overarching message and viewpoint that you don't have time to do interactions. So knowing the strategic difference is going to help you become more effective. And when you're more effective, it helps you get booked and rebooked and referred. Yeah, perfect. And um, really speaking that one more time, I, I, speaking back to, I wanted to share this talking point about speaking on a panel, a free panel. I spoke on a free panel for this organization called Women of Color and Communications, the New York chapter, spoke on their free panel. That free panel um, opportunity led to a $60,000 contract with someone who was in the audience and saw me speaking there. And so when you're thinking about when you're sussing out different panel and different opportunities, you also want to consider who might be in the room. So I knew that in this room, there were going to be women who were in leadership positions and organizations and PR positions and facilitating communications, marketing, et cetera. And so there, that one person, that free engagement led to a $60,000 contract, which when I was like, you know what? I'm going to resign from my job because this one contract has basically replaced my income. But that all came from a free opportunity and being in a room with women who were decision makers and deciding I'm going to speak for free in this room full of decision makers. So just wanted to kind of speak to that of the power of free engagements, just knowing who to speak for free in front of. You guys have so many questions. We're going to try to get through the rest of this. And then when we're going to open it up for Q&A, I will go back and dig into some of these questions. But I wanted to make sure that I keep this because around we had certain things we wanted to touch on. So I'm going to move to the next thing. I'm not ignoring you, but we'll come back to it. So um, the next is who can pay you? You kind of touched on it, Arel, but I think we can like boil that down really quick. Who are the people time and time again that are actually paying speakers? Right. So this is really important. A lot of people say, oh, I speak. I'm going to tell you the secret, right? So I'm going to give you a secret um, for each category that I see. People say I speak at colleges. No, you don't, right? You speak at departments that are within colleges. This is a very big distinction. Now, people don't talk about this publicly because they don't want people to know this, right? And I get why, right? You'll never see me ever post, yo, I just spoke for the student leadership and diversity department at the university of so-and-so. You'll never see me say that. I'll just say, yo, I'm speaking at the university of so-and-so. So, -and -so. so sure. what happens is people think, oh, if I want to speak at colleges, as an example, there's a college client. Yo, one college could book you 12 different times and they'll never know that they booked you before because colleges are siloed. So for example, as a college example, uh, the orientation office, right? New students come in, they do programming every single year. I literally have clients, that's like one of my secrets. Like, nah, I'll share, okay, it's fine, right? So orientation, if you speak in college, they do orientation every single year and there's new students every single year. I have clients I've been working with for 10 years and every year, they're like, Arel, you save your date, we're gonna get you back next year. Absolutely, I have one client that brings me for a whole week and literally, like, I take my family, we spend a whole week in Texas, it's beautiful, and we spend a whole week, and I do a bunch of presentations, and we go hang out at the, they got a water park out there, and they got this beach, it's just like, it's, it's beautiful, right? So, like, you can do that if you understand the college ain't gonna book me, but the orientation people will. So, orientation directors are great. On every college campus, there's someone who usually does student success and student leadership, right? The campuses are called different things. They might be called campus life, student services, student leadership student support services, right? Unfortunately, there's no uniform name, mm -hmm. but if their mission is to do leadership or student success, they're 100% book speakers, right? Now, this is the other secret. You go to high schools, people say I speak at high schools. High schools don't have money. No, they ain't got no money, but you know what? There's programs in high schools that got a ton of money, and they, and this is, this is like, in the true speaking success system, we have something that's called the, the goose that lays the golden egg, right? One of the things that I've done that's been just fantastic is I understand how Department of Education money works. Now, this is beautiful money, right? Department of Education, they give out money to programs that are within schools. And they say, you've got to spend this money. 
And if you don't spend this money, you're gonna get in trouble. So you know what they do? They spend the money. Now the high school don't have any money. But all of a sudden, you're working with a group that has a grant, whether it's like a 21st century grant or a gear up grant or a trio grant or something like that. And all of a sudden, the school's paying you 10, 15, 20,000 to do a high school presentation. And you're like, you can't get that. People say you can't get that money in high school. That's when you contact in the principal. The principal ain't got no money for you. They don't, they don't control that. They make big decisions. So what happens is people spend all their time reaching out to principals getting no because they don't understand that there is money, but it's not those people. It's the people who control those grants, right? Mm -hmm. Then if you go on the corporate side, it's like the HR people. HR people are constantly doing things. If they have business managers, they're constantly doing things, right? Like literally their whole like job is to do events and do services, right? So on a larger level, HR is a fantastic group to go into. Diversity is a fantastic group to go into. Our HR leadership is a fantastic. So look for the people in control of that. And they, that's what they do. They're, they're, and, and the funny thing is they're constantly, they're constantly looking for people. So sometimes people say, oh, no one knows me. That could benefit you because maybe they bring, brought in the same six, seven people for the last like 10 years and they want fresh blood. So it's always about when you reach out to them, how you position yourself that if you're, if I've been in the game for 10 years, I say, trust me because I know what I'm doing. I've been in the game for 10 years. If I'm brand new to a market, I say, trust me because I can bring new ideas outside of the same incestuous ideas you've been getting and this is going to benefit you. So it's, it's all about positioning and getting in with those people. Yeah, and um, Dominique asked, who do you contact if not the principal? And um, one of the things that I learned in the TSS system was like, who do I contact? Uh, and I, one of my other, Steven, so we had accountability partners in the TSS system. So Steven is another financial educator. Steven Hughes, we're, we're really good friends. Like we call AP, he came to my baby shower. Like we are homies. That's, um, he's my family now. He's literally sat out and smoked cigars with my dad. Like that's what I, I got him out of the TSS program. But um, one of the things that he did, and he was really good at contacting like the person who was in charge of it at the school. So um, Stephen, was it, was it DECA that he was speaking to? Or it was like one of those associations within the school where he contacted the person in charge of that. So maybe you look on LinkedIn and you find someone who's in charge of DECA, which is a marketing, um, a marketing uh, club within schools mm -hmm. and students learn how to market or like you said, TRIO, or like some of those other programs that they, uh, maybe a teacher or a counselor, or they might have an appointed staff member at the school who manages it or supervises it. Um, you can find I, that- I got a list. Them. They were asking who are the people you contact? I have a list of them. I'll give them to your people for free, right? So if people are like, oh, who do I contact? I'll give you the list, Tanya. You can email it to everybody so they can go, oh, I have a starting point. But I always say this, it's like, all right, you know, I think of it like this. Um, people say, oh, if I have the contact, all my problems are solved. I say, think of it like this. Let's say you're a single guy. I can show you where all the women are, right? There's all the women, they right there, right? How do you approach them? What do you say? How do you talk their language? Like, so like a lot of times people think, oh, if I just have the list, I can just blast them and I'll be good. But there's so much about the approach, right? And obviously like, there's a lot to that. I, I couldn't cover that in five seconds, but I'm happy to give the list because it, it's a great starting point. But in the same way, if I'm a single woman or a single man and I want to walk up to someone, like just saying, there's the men, there's the women. It's not that simple, mm -hmm. but it's at least a good starting point, right? Because if you're yeah. in a room by yourself, you ain't going to get no dates, right? You got to go out somewhere. Yeah, and some people might throw it on the wall and it sticks. You know, I have some hustlers. My mentee, Jessica, she's a hustler. And I'd be like, she speaks everywhere. Um, well, she speaks in a lot of places. And she's just that type of person who has a gift of gab. But once you know how to approach them and kind of speak their language, as you said earlier, the things that you need to know that are important to them and how do you include that boilerplate, we call that boilerplate language, which is like, these are things that are important to them. Now you're speaking their language. They're like, she knows exactly what we need. This is, let's book this person. Um, that's like something that is a learned skill and something that like for me, I had to have a coach teach me how to do that. Cause it wasn't just sending a blanket email. It was like, okay, speak this language and messaging to them. So I'm happy that you asked that question, Dominique. Cause nope, the principal is not going to be the person. Anytime I've been booked to speak at a college university 
or a school, the principal has never booked me. Honestly, I don't think I've ever met a principal, if you want me to be honest, or a dean or no, a this is um, the, like like the, president. This is school. what they do. This is all they do. They and show up five minutes beforehand yeah. and they go, oh, thanks so much for coming. Bye-bye. I got to go do other stuff. Yeah, That's like it. I don't think I've, it's very rare that I actually meet that person. It's the person who's in charge. Like you said, when I spoke at Howard University, it was the... Um, it was the group that Mary McLeod Bethune um, founded. I forgot the name of it. It was like the Young Women of Color or the Young Young Black Women's Association or something like that at Howard University. It wasn't the dean or anybody like that. When I spoke at Wake Forest University, it was the um, it was the MBA Students Alliance that brought me in. It wasn't like the school. It was actually a student group that bought me and had money and had a budget to pay me. When I spoke at Lehigh. It was a school, like the, it was the person who had the budget in the department. And I've had people, one thing you taught me to do is have departments de, de, um, combine their efforts. So somebody might reach out to me for my speaking fee and they're like, ooh, we can't, that's a little steep for us. We only have $3,500 in the budget. Great, well, is there another organization on campus that you actually can partner with that can help you cover the cost? And I came in and spoke to two, so maybe the AKAs and the Young Women's Christian Association at the school is now, they're coming together with their budgets and bringing me to speak. And that's something I learned through you as well. Um, There's so. tons of different ways to position it. And I'm, I'm so glad you said that because I think people, I, I'm gonna go on a rant. Let, let's stay focused. I'm gonna go okay. on a rant. Right, I wanna say a lot. I mean, we have a short period of time. I know we're coming down to the, the, the closing of an hour and everything. But yes. And Frederick said, I tend to get overwhelmed with a lot of information. What is the first thing I should do in the simplest form? We'll make sure we answer that at the end. The first thing they should do in the simplest form. So um, we have two, I have two more questions for you, Aurel, then we're really going to open this up for Q&A. Um, what is the biggest mistake you see most people make when they're getting started speaking? Yeah, so here's the biggest mistake, right? If you do not have a speaking video, number one, if you do not have a speaking video, you're not going to get high fees. You can get a couple hundred bucks if you're lucky, if you're lucky, because the video is the proof in the pudding, right? So <clears throat> whatever you have to do to put together a video, whatever it is, that's what's important. Free speaking engagements is super important. I see a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to put any money into a speech. Yo, like my, I know I got Samsung. Some of y'all got like iPhone. You're like, mm, team iPhone, so what? Who cares? Team iPhone, whatever, right? iPhone, Samsung, yo, the quality on these jammies is crazy now. Like, you put on live focus on Samsung or portrait mode or, in, or you get a great, so like you just have to get video and ideally you can get someone on Fiverr or, or Upwork to really edit it very, very inexpensively nowadays. You just need something. Or you could just film like a six minute clip of your hottest part of your content and just send it out as an unedited video so people can see the real deal right that's what i did in the beginning i gave them an unedited real deal video because i just didn't have um you know i didn't have like editing back then i just didn't do it now i do right and and, and i pay for it because it's always an investment so that's the first thing the the video so that's very tactile psychologically and this is going to affect people more is these big mistakes that people make is they think oh I don't have to do anything and people are going to book me to speak just because I said I'm available to speak. Like, no, like you've got to put yourself out there. You've got to invest in yourself. You have to think about what's the, what, what do I really want from it? Because no, like, it's like trying to get a woman. I'm a man. So I like, I'm a heterosexual male. So like, if I want to, I have a wife, right? If I want to get my wife to fall in love with me, I can't kind of sort of get her to fall in love with me. I got to go hard, right? Like she's got to know, like I love her and I'm doing everything I possibly can for her, right? And if I don't, she's not going to fall in love with me. She may tolerate me and she may go on a date with me. So what that means to you with your speaking career is some of you are taking your speaking career very lightly. Oh, if Mr. or Mrs. Wright show up, fine. If someone randomly emails me to book me to speak, I'll do it, but I'm not going to do anything towards it. Like, you don't deserve to get paid to speak, if that's your mindset. Like, you, you didn't earn it. Like, I don't deserve my wife's love unless I earn it. That's, that's how I get it. I, earn, it does, I don't get it just because I'm me. I have to, like, do things. So if you're someone who's going to say, I want to get booked to speak, but I don't want to do any work, that's a big mistake. If you're not willing to go and do free presentations, go get someone to take photos, uh, reach out to people, go to, con if you're not willing to do any of those things, you do not, and you will never deserve the right to get paid to speak, and you'll never be on Tanya's level 
and getting paid what she's getting paid because you haven't earned it. So you can't be someone who's going to be one foot in, one foot out. Like we're approaching 2020. You either say, I'm, I'm setting my mindset and my intention. This is what I'm doing. I will do what it takes and follow the steps and do everything I need to do and give it my all. And you win. If you kind of, like, there's nothing in life you've kind of sold and wanted to do that you've ever achieved, ever, in your life, ever. Unless it's like you won the lotto because you bought a ticket, right? Like, and someone is going to win the lotto, but it ain't going to be you. That's how it works, right? So, like, don't build yourself up of, oh, I know a friend who got paid a bunch to speak at a thing, and they didn't really do much to get it. Like, yeah, it happens, but that's like winning the lottery. Like, don't, I wouldn't bet my, like, as a money person, Tanya, you wouldn't bet your, your, your child's. Uh, future on winning the lottery. I don't so, play the lottery. Yeah, <laughs> I don't play. Bad idea. <laughs> Someone's gonna win, but it ain't gonna be you. Yeah, you know what I, I mean. Like, so like, you gotta I, like plant your feet and say, "This is what I'm doing." And if it's not, like, get out the way for the rest of us who want to impact people and actually care about helping. And I'll just build on that, Aurel. And I will say that you know, um, before I before I started working with Aurel, before I like decided to take it serious, I had been on the cover of Black Enterprise Magazine. I had all these credentials. I was on BET. Like people had seen me everywhere, but I did not start getting paid consistently until I until I added a method and started doing the work because like. I had inbound inquiries and so forth because people had saw me there, but I really had to learn how to take it to the next level and to do the work. And even now, after someone pays me to speak, I send them a thank you. I send them a follow-up. When I went to Miami, I had a speaking engagement in Miami a few, um, back in August. I spoke in Miami two times. The first time, there was a company. I spoke at their women's retreat. They flew me out. They flew my, my, my baby out, my husband out, my nanny out, everything. You best believe the people who hired me, I sent them gift baskets. I was on Nordstrom looking for personalized gifts for them and like still doing the work even after I was done speaking to maintain that relationship because the next year when they have these, this organization has conferences for the entire organization, not just the women's portion of their organization. They have conferences like multiple times a year. So I need to make sure I'm still doing the work after they paid me initially so they can continue to pay me and not just assume, oh yeah, they like me when I met them. They'll, you know, they'll pay me again. Like, no, you have to keep that relationship going and continue to do the work, which is something I wasn't doing. Um, so going to the last question before we open up for Q&A. Arel, if you had to start over again, say you had no experience, no followers, because this is the thing. A lot of people come to me like, well, I don't have as many followers as you, or I don't, I mean, I got like a little bit of followers. Like nobody follows me like you. If you had to start over and you didn't have a lot of followers and you didn't have any experience, what would you do? Right. I don't have a lot of followers right now. Here's the thing, right? I, I don't got a blue check. I don't, Tiny got a blue check on her Instagram. She fancy. She verified, right? Like I'm not verified. Like I don't have a lot of, like if you, if you were to come to my page, like, my number, like I don't have hundreds of thousands of followers, right? And I, and I, I don't, maybe I will, maybe I never will. It, like, I don't need it. Like, cause I, the people who I build relationships with are the people who matter in my world, right? Like I, I'm not on Instagram to try to flex on people. I'm trying to, you know, share a part of my, myself and, and build my business very strategically. So if I started all over, right? This is exactly what I would do, right? The first thing I would do is I would, I would literally jump on the internet and I would research like, okay, if I could, would I want to speak at schools? Cool. What are five or 10 high schools in my, in like a 10 mile radius of my home, right? I want to speak at colleges. What's 10 colleges and then figure out some departments within those colleges and just reach out. I want to speak at businesses. What's the local chamber of commerce, the local rotary club, the local lions club, Kiwanis club, reach out to all of them do a free presentation, make sure I don't suck because so many people, I, I can tell you, and this is important. This is like a personal thing for me because I hate a lot of people who think like this. And it's not that I hate you. I just, no, I hate you. I do. I hate you. I'm going to say, I'm going to say I hate you. If you say this phrase, oh, I don't need any help on the speaking skills. I'm good. I immediately know you're never going to be actually good, right? Because that's a fixed mindset. Growth mindset says, how do I get better? How do I constantly, if you think you're like, I've been doing this for over a decade and I'm still looking for ways to improve because I'm trying to be the best speaker that they've ever seen. If you don't have that kind of mindset, you're just, you're going to suck and make it easier for people like me and Tanya to not suck because we're constantly trying to grow. Right? So I'm looking for that free presentation. I'm looking for who can I get in front of what I would also do. And this is what I did when I was 
um, very first starting, I got a, a, a business coach, right? I did not have the money. I did not have the money. It was a, a really great sales program and I was super scared and I put it on my credit card and I said, I have to do this because now I'm accountable. This is why every month my credit card got dinged by that coach. And every time it got dinged, it was a reminder to me that either I'm going to make this money back or I suck. It was never the coach. It was never the person who taught me about business and sales, right? Because their stuff works because I'm like, I saw it works for them. It works for all these people. They have all these testimonials, all these people they've helped. So if it doesn't work for me, it's on me. So I needed to hold myself to account, right? Like if you look at anything that you've ever done that you've made a big difference with, you've held yourself to account. There is something that is important. A birth of a kid is a fantastic way to hold yourself to account because now you got to prepare for, for someone else who's totally dependent upon you, right? So my, the birth of my children was one of the most motivating factors of my life a few years back. But before I had kids, I said, like, I don't want to, like, I grew up on projects in the projects on welfare in Brooklyn. I was like, I'm never, ever, ever going to, like, when I have kids, they ain't never going to grow up in that. And my kids, they trust me, they ain't living in nothing close to progress, <laughs> right? And I'm going to work my butt off to make sure they don't. <laughs> Like, like, so you got to create this, like, yo, I'm like sick of being who I was. Right. So like the, the, the next thing I would do, like I would hire someone to hold myself accountable because if I'm getting dinged, it's going to hurt me and I'm going to want to remove that pain. So I'm going to achieve my goals. And then like, you gotta, you gotta get pissed off. Like one of the problems with people is just, I think it's true. It's the way I see the world. So I, it's my truth. I don't want to say it's your truth, but people are way too comfortable. Like you got the internet, so you could jump on your phone, jump on IG and you can feel comfortable. You could jump on Netflix and watch movies and be comfortable. You can eat ramen noodles and be comfortable, right? You could do all of those things and go from Monday to Tuesday and totally live a sucky life. And then you die. And then you did nothing with what you were supposed to do. That happens all the time. I'm deadly afraid of that. Like I, I, I get angry if I'm like, why am I playing low? Why am I playing small? Why am I... And, and here's the thing, I can think about something for months and I can have one conversation with a mentor or a friend or in a mastermind group I'm a part of and someone will say one thing and I go, yo, I'm being a little punk. I'm being a little punk. I got to stop being a little punk. And you got to move and then like just, you know, I like to build the parachute as I jump out. So I'm getting a free presentation. I'm, I'm finding a way to hold myself accountable that really like puts me on the line. Not like, ooh, I'm gonna tell my sister's friend and she's gonna text me. Like that's not holding you accountable. Like you gotta hold yourself accountable. You gotta get pissed off about your current situation. So you drive and you gotta make this about other people. Because if your whole thing is how do I get paid to speak? Like how do I get paid to speak? It's the wrong mindset. It's how do I provide so much value that the byproduct is that they have to pay me to speak. And I think it's Les Brown who said, um, your passion is something that you love to do so much you would do it for free, but you do it so well that people pay you for it. Mm. So if you're not dedicated to the craft, if you're not dedicated to like, like, like if you're not dedicated to the craft of impacting lives and you just want to get paid to speak, you'll never get paid to speak. You won't. But if you're dedicated to the craft and you're like, I got to learn all this business stuff because this is the tool that allows me to get on the stage so that I can impact people's lives and make a difference. So all that business stuff is a necessity that I need to do. I'm going to do everything. I've, I've learned, I'm constantly trying to learn every 2%, 1% change, half a percent change, because if that means I get on a stage, I know I'm going to change people's lives because that's what I'm like so dedicated to do. But if you don't think like that, you're going to be on this webinar next year talking about, mm, oh, yeah, Tanya, last year you did that webinar. I was really thinking about it, but, you know, I haven't really done nothing with it because I like being normal and average. Like, and if that's your life, like, I don't want to, like, crap on you if that's your life, but that, I can't help you because, I like, I, like I, I don't vibrate like that. So, like, I need people to realize that you've been given something your life experiences have been given to you for a very specific yeah. reason. You didn't go through all the things you went through just so life could be difficult. You went through all of those difficult things so that when you see someone going through a difficult time, you can reach and help them and say, yo, I'm not telling you this because I think it's going to work. I'm telling you because I know it works and I can help you with it. That's a beautiful gift. And if you don't do something with that, you literally wasted your pain. 
because your pain turns into your gain when you utilize it correctly. If not, life just sucks for you. But if every time something sucks for me, as a speaker, I go, I got another story to tell on stage. Mm -hmm. I got another way to impact people. I got another way to relate to, the, to, to people. Like, so it, it, it changes the way you look at life. But if it's up here and your life is this big, you're gonna fail at everything you do. But if you move your life to be about all of the people around you and making everyone better with every interaction, that's when you grow. But I promise you, if you're not holding yourself accountable, you're gonna play a small game because that's everybody wants to play small. And listen, guys, this was, I... <sighs> Y'all, now y'all see why I, have, I love Aurel so much. Like why I say, like he's one of my favorite people, um, is because when I went to his workshop, like I was still playing small, and he really helped me realize. First of all, he helped me mine my what we call mine your life for stories. So the way he thought about like every time something happens, he's like now it's the story. So now in my phone, I literally have like when something happens, I put it in my phone. I'm like, this is speaking material. This is speaking material. This is speaking material. Um, Q is in here. Q was at the workshop I did in Miami. And like, I was able to tell a story about the first time I visited Cape Coast in Ghana and like how I wove that into my speaking presentation and you're able to move people with your story. And that was a skill set that I learned from you that I previously didn't have. Even now, like my labor, the giving birth unmedicated is now one of my stories that have, I've woven into one of my speaking presentations and one of my template presentations, because it was an experience I went through and you can expire other people through your experiences in so many different ways. But so many of us don't realize that we're not going through things in vain. And there are so many other people who can identify with your experience. It's just about understanding how to relate that to people and how to transform audiences. And that's another big part. So we've spoken a lot about the business of speaking. And one of the most incredible values of like having a coach like Aurel for me was learning how to inspire transformation with my like what my speaking topics whether it was finance and so forth because that doesn't come easy to everybody but the great speakers know how to do it and when you're watching someone you're like man they just took me on this journey i don't even know how i got here how am i here like that is a skill set that sometimes it takes someone like an rel or like, you know, peers, that was a good thing. Like me and Steven having an accountability partner, me and Steven, I'd be like, Steven, what do you think about this story? Does it take you to this point from point A to point B? That's something that a lot of people don't think about. They're like, I'm just going to get up and talk about loving yourself. But it's like, how do we have a transformative experience so that it is an entertaining experience yes. um, and that I feel connected to you at the end of it? So that was it's not just about knowing the business of speaking. We talk a lot about the business. I don't want you guys to think it's just about the business and it's not just about, you know, your willpower and everything. It's about knowing what to do when you get on that stage so that you can walk off and feel like you high-fiving people instead of looking around like, y'all like that? Y'all into that? You know, like, you don't want to... Tanya, what you're saying is, is so, so important and I, and I want to make sure people are getting it because you, you said some fire and it was so fire that people might have missed it, right? When your audience comes in, when they leave your presentation, they have to be transformed. They have to see the world differently. And if you don't take people on a journey, if you don't take people through ebbs and flows and ups and downs, have them see the world this way, change the way that they see the world and go, oh my gosh, no, this is how I should do it. Oh, and I can do this and here's how I do it. And here, like, that's what is, let me tell you something. People say, oh, how do I get booked? This? Let me tell you the best way to get, like, Hands down, and if I had like five hours, I would go deep into this. It's why I created that True Speaking Success System, which we're gonna talk about in a second, uh, what that is. But one of the things we talk about is if you get in front of a room of people and people in the audience can book you to speak and you transform their lives, this is what happens. They come up to you and go, oh my God, we need that at my company. We need that at my college. We're doing, a, we're, we're doing a conference and I'm on the planning committee. I need you to, like, whatever that was, I need that at my thing, right? So people say, oh, you know, a, a friend of mine, his name is Johnson Sprinkles, he, he had this great phrase, he called pregnant bunnies, is what he called it. And I pregnant love it. bunnies? Pregnant bunnies. This is the quick story. If you're broke and you got five kids and you promise them all a gift and you promise them a bunny as a gift, what's the best kind of bunny to give them a pregnant bunny. Because that bunny, bunny 
<laughs> is going to birth more bunnies and you don't got to pay for those bunnies and you get your bunnies, right? So when I go to speaking engagements, I'm trying to do pregnant bunny presentations. I'm trying to be in a room that's a pregnant presentation. And what that means is if I speak at it, people in the room will come up to me and say, yo, be, that was amazing. I need you to come over here. So like we teach you how to specifically find these kind of events so that when you speak, one speaking engagement leads to five. Those five all lead to five. Those five all, and then you create this pyramid from one really good presentation. But if you just go up there and go, you gotta believe in yourself. You gotta believe to believe in yourself. You suck. And like, it doesn't matter like that you, you had a good message. You have to say the message. And there's very specific ways of, like you said, like the story method is very important. When things happen to you, detail them, write them down because then you have stories you can tell that are real and not made up. Made up stories don't hit as hard. Uh, so there's tons of things like that to make you a better speaker. But that is super like just quintessential in getting more business is the transformation. And when you talked about it, you got to take them on a journey, people could have missed it. But that right there is worth your entire time on this, pre on this webinar, honestly. Yeah, and the one last thing I want to say is, um, before we open this up, is that, you know, as, a, as an individual, I'm somewhat reserved. Like, I, you know, I'm going to dance on stage and I'm going to have a good time. I'm not the person who's going to yell at you. I'm not going to break into, like, a hymn. I'm not, like, I'm not, I don't use some of these tactics that some of the, um, some well-known speakers may use. And for me, that gave me a lot of a lack of confidence as a speaker because I was like, well, I'm not going to show up and do that. I'm not going to tap dance on stage. I don't have a big like auntie or mom personality that, you know, that they, they may respond to. And that I had to get over that. And you really helped me dig into my style as a speaker and how I could transform people in my way, because we can all be transformative in our own way. And I just want to remind you that you don't have to be like another speaker. You just have to be the best version of yourself as a speaker and understand how you're going to transform people. Because I know a lot of people who get paid to speak regularly. They're not aggressive. They're, they're soft spoken to an extent and they're killing it. And they're making a lot of money as paid speakers. So that that's possible. And I really want people to think about that because um, what you were saying around and like the pregnant bunny, just two weeks ago, I had a phone call with someone who saw me speak at Blavity Summit 21. She sent me and my team an email. She said, I saw you speak at Summit 21. You were one of my favorite speakers. We're having a conference in Toronto, and I want to bring you to Toronto next January. Now, how I feel about going to Toronto in January, <laughs> I don't know. It's a little cold, but it goes to show, like, I was speaking. She saw me in the audience, and, like, she was like, I want to book you based on seeing you speak. So that is absolutely true. And just happened in my life and yes frederick everybody can't be eric thomas everybody can't when you want it as bad as you can breathe like everybody can't do that it's good for motivating you and i used it when you know when i needed to do things like write my book and everything else but that might not be your style of speaking and there's still a lane for you even if that's not your style and so we're going to move into q a but I just want the people who can, you know, stay around and everything. And we will send out a replay of this. And we will send out the, um, Aurel is going to give you guys a list of people you can reach out to. And I'm going to actually send people a link to my speaking reel. Because you mentioned speaking reel. I'm going to send people a link to my speaking reel so you can see my speaking reel um, and get an example of it. But keep in mind, my husband is also a videographer. So it's a little unfair. Yeah, her video reel is dope. <laughs> I remember I saw it. I was like, yo, she got some dope. She got some skills. My husband's a videographer, but I'll give you an example of, of a speaking reel. Um, Aurel, really quick, I did want to um, just shit you are doing, like, first of all, I was in my feelings when I saw this because I know what I paid for the TSS and it wasn't cheap. Um, but you actually are running a special deal because you love me yes. so much, because you love my audience so much. You're actually running a special deal right now that people who are on this can can get before we open up for Q&A we're still coming with Q&A guys but just in case some people wanted to hop off I wanted Aurel to share what he's doing because yeah so as we mentioned earlier we talked about the true speaking success system this was the thing that I was telling Tony about that's like everything right so I put something together with that I got some cool bonuses because Tony said yo I want you to do something like wild I was like all right I'll put something together I got you right so I put together the true speaking success system think of it like this this is the only online course you will ever need to start 
booking and getting paid to speak. There's five modules for it. It teaches you branding. How do you create a brand so that when people see you, they want to be around you, they want to contact you, they get magnetically drawn to you. There's a specific way that you do that and we break that down in the branding. The second module is about marketing. Who are the people? How do you get in front of them? What are the most effective strategies? What are the things that are gonna get people to call you? Then when they set up meetings with you, the third module is called the Super Sales Highway. It shows you literally how to ask questions, super simple questions that leads people to the natural conclusion of them saying, and I swear it sounds wild, but it happens all the time. They will ask you, can we send you a contract? You don't have to ask for the sale or any of that. Like it's specific questions that get them to that point. Then we give you systems, how to run your business. So you're not like freaking out now that you get in speaking engagements. How do you make it work? We give you all of the systems. Most of them are really inexpensive and cheap softwares that we use to automate many things. And then I'll show you how to put together your exact presentation. We call it how to put together a killer keynote, how to put your presentation together. I actually give you a live presentation that I've done. And then I break down all the psychology of here's why I'm doing this. Look forward to this. This is going to be really cool. And we show you how to create a really, really good program, right? If that's all I did. And by the way, when, when Tanya did it, this was $2,000, right? <laughs> and it, was, it wasn't cheap, right? And she got into a program where she was paying $300 a month. Right. I was paying like three forty nine or three ninety seven, almost four hundred dollars. It was three ninety seven. I think it was three ninety seven actually. I think it was three ninety seven. Yeah, I was paying like four hundred dollars a month. It yeah. was like four hundred a month, right? And and that was that was it. That was the it only was thing. It was worth it. Yeah. Right. And that alone, I was like, this alone, like I would I would like do anything to get, right? Because it's all stuff that's like tangible. Like the stuff we talked about today is like if you thought this was good, like you still got to think about okay, if the person's there, how do I get in touch with them? Now that a lot of people, this is weird they'll have someone call them because they're doing this stuff and it works and then they're freaking out because they're like what do i say what do i do we show you how to do all of that then on top of that when i was doing the coaching program i created videos and we have literally a year's worth of content that are very specific niche oriented topics and we have a video that gets released every two weeks sales skills business skills speaking skills we have something like called the elevator technique, how to use the elevator technique to put together the best message possible. So literally for an entire year, you're never more than two weeks away from new fresh content that's gonna be delivered to you and it's not available literally anywhere else online, right? In addition to that, we're gonna show you how to, and this is important to me, if you don't have a book, you need to get a book, okay? And if you have a book, there's a good chance you probably need to write another one because you probably didn't write it thinking about how do I leverage this to sell bulk sales of it? How do I leverage this so that it builds my credibility and my branding by how it's designed? How do I leverage this as a marketing piece? How do I get paid? How do I get someone to buy 500 copies of my book but even if they don't have a speaking fee, right? So like the book is such a huge part of it. So we have a really, really quick, really powerful program that shows you exactly how to write a book. And then what I want to do and I don't do coaching like that anymore because I have a lot of projects. And, and Tony was actually involved with one of my media projects, which was such a random, random thing that you as a guest on that show that I was doing. Um, that's for another conversation. But anyway, um, so I have some other stuff coming up, which I'm really excited about. But so I don't do a lot of coaching now. But in addition to everything that I said, I realized that like this kind of communication is just vitally important. Because sometimes if you get too much information, you might be like, well, what's most important to me for my specific situation? So I'm gonna do some coaching just like this, but we're gonna open it up just to the TSS fam. You come in, I'm gonna work directly with you the same way I'm talking to Tanya, I'm talking to you. We do it in a group format. So you ask your questions, we answer them in depth. You get to learn from your other colleagues as they ask questions and you go, oh, I didn't even think about that. That's amazing. That, the same way Tanya's talking about, oh, Stephen was in the group and I learned so much from that relationship. We try to build that. So we're going to do that in December and in January. We're going to do intensive group coaching program to make sure you end this year and start next year. Now, all of this, I think I totaled it up. It was like $9,000 in total. And literally, because I know it's the end of the year and Tanya was like, give me something good. It's literally just $4.97. And this isn't a sales pitch. This isn't anything like, oh, you got to go do it right now, right? Like, look, we're going to put it up for five days. It's just the price is stupid low, right? It just is. If $4.97 is too, like, oh, it's too much, you can do three payments of $1.99, right? Oh, it's $4.99. Excuse me, I said $4.97. It's $4.99. 
and you can do three payments of $199. So literally in one speaking engagement, you could quintuple or even 10X your investment in the program. So like my goal wasn't to make it something that would be a, a barrier, but you gotta be committed to it. And you gotta say, yo, I really, really want this. And, I, and if you don't like it, by the way, in 30 days, I'll refund all your money. Like I don't wanna keep someone's money that I'm not helping. So you can run it, test pilot, get all the coaching, get all that. And if in 30 days you feel like I wasted your time, we'll give you your money back. No problems, no questions asked, right? But this is an entire opportunity for the people who are listening to this and saying, yo, like, I'm trying to get this. Like, I'm like, I'm ready to put my feet in the sand and I want to make this happen. And I not only want the content, but I want the guidance and the support. That's what this is for. And that's for who this is for. So if you feel like you can benefit from that and help others and you're ready to put your feet in the ground, just go to, there's a link that Tanya just put in the chat and it's called truespeakingsuccess.com slash Tanya dash TSS, right? So TSS is true speaking success. So if you go to that, you'll see everything that's there. You can sign up. I promise you there is no one that's going to work as hard for you as I am. Like if you give me an ounce, I'm going to give you a ton. Because like, I want to help people and sometimes they need to be pushed and sometimes they need to, to see things in a new way and then be given the exact steps, right? So if that's you, I highly encourage you to go into the program, get involved in it. It, it, it will be one of the, I, I want to say it's the greatest decision I ever made because that's way too big of a statement, but in your <laughs> speaking career, it'll be one of the greatest decisions you make. And I put my name on that because I don't like, I don't play around. We've helped people with zero followings that you've never heard of before, get paid thousands of dollars for speaking engagements. We just booked Jessica Janair. I don't know if you remember Jessica from the Jessica, she, so she was my book writing accountability partner. She yeah, we just, we just got her booked up in California. Um, she's gonna be in San Jose doing something really beautiful out there, so. Um, Jessica's amazing. Yeah, she, she, I remember the first, like, you know, we had a Facebook group and so did they get access to the Facebook group or is that only for the um, all the members? There's going to be a, fa it's not the Facebook group you were a part of, it's a different one, but yes, they'll get a private Facebook group as well. Because I remember being in the Facebook group and seeing people like, like Geo. Geo might have like 3,000 followers on, on Instagram and Geo was out here knocking out $10,000 contracts. And I was like, yeah. like Geo was killing it. And like so many of my fellow group members were and are killing it. Raquel, every time I turn around, Raquel is speaking somewhere else. And so I, I really wanted to share this with everyone because like you don't, there's a lot of people, you don't have to have a lot of followers. You don't have to be on the cover of Black Enterprise Magazine. You don't have to have, like, it really is about knowing who can afford to pay you to speak, how to get in front of them and how to kill it when you get there. And think, and think of it like this, right? And this is the important thing. And this is for anyone who still might be on the fence about, oh, but I, okay, it's easy for you to say, Tanya, or, or it's easy for you to say, because Little Miss Black Enterprise, but, Think of it like this, right? And this was an example that was given to me by um, someone that I've learned a lot from, right? Imagine if you have a pain in your elbow and you can't fix it. There's this pain in your elbow and it's there and it's bugging you and everything you do, like every time you go to a doctor, nobody knows how to fix it, right? And then I go to you, be like, hey, by the way, do you, you don't have a pain in your elbow. And you go, I do. Oh, does it shoot down the, the front of your forearm and go into your pinky? Yeah, it does. And when you, when you pick up heavy items and put it down, do you have tingly feelings in your hand? Yeah, that's exactly what happens. Oh, and you ever wake up in the middle of the night and you feel the pain shooting up into your shoulder? Yo, that's exactly the problem I have. If I say, oh yeah, I know exactly what you're talking I don't even have to tell you I know how to solve it. You're immediately gonna say, I trust you. You, you speak my language. Yeah. Yeah. You understand, you understand me. You understand what I'm going. No one, I couldn't even verbalize what you just verbalized to me. I, un I know that you get me. When you can speak that, when you speak like that, people don't care if you got three followers. People don't care if you got 3,000 followers, 3 million followers. It, 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 because I know you can solve a problem for me. So if you can talk about what you do, what your expertise is, in the language of your clients, and we show you exactly how to do that, they're gonna go, this person gets it. They get it. I can solve this problem so I can move on and do the thousand other things I need to do. That's the secret. That's the secret. It's none of the other stuff. Yeah. So guys, the link is there in the bio. I'm, I, the link is there, not in the bio, but in the chat. She's talking Instagram talk. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, oh, wow, Kara said, I'm ready. 
Oh, Karen, thank you. Karen, so I have two cousins I have on here. I have Karen, um, who I said is the first black female hurricane hunter. And then I have That's me, amazing. Nadia, who is my cousin, who actually um, works in financial services at ANT. And so at North Carolina ANT College. So thank you. And Karen said she signed up. Karen, I'm ready to see you out here. Like I am ready to see my cousin out here on stage. I'm ready to see all of you guys out here um, on stage because it is like there's so uh, I was doing a Facebook live last week with um, with my friend Jason and one of the things he was like uh, a, a line from paid in full and like he was doing this he was like because everybody eats B like everybody eats like we all can eat there's so much money in speaking and there's so much opportunity that like I don't mind sharing this because Aurel has shared it graciously with me Aurel is still making money you saw him you heard him say multiple seven figure businesses I'm making money. People in my classes are making money. Like there's so much opportunity out here and not enough people know how to do this and how to get to the opportunity. And so that's really why I was like, we have to do this. And so I want to, um, I'm proud of you, Karen. So I want to open it up for questions because we still, ha we have a few people. I know Ralph is late over on your side. Yeah, um, yeah. let's jump in. Let's lightning round it. I'm let's, like, let's like, go ahead, lightning, lightning round, round questions. It. Go ahead and drop your questions. We're answering them. If you're feeling like I feel, you know, can he help me with this? Can he help me with that? Go ahead and drop your question in here because um, now's your time to get your answer from around. Yeah, so, so type in your questions as you go on. And as you're typing it in, I'm, I'm just going to say this, right? If you look at the last, you know, um, X amount of years of your life, they happen to you in a specific sequence, in a specific way, if you look at it so that you can impact people. So if you are the first this black female storm tornado hurricane. Mm -hmm. hurricane hunter, right? Like there was an incredible series of events that led you to that. But now you can say, what was the, what was the, the 10,000 foot view of it that now anyone can apply to their life? Because I may not want to be a hurricane hunter, but the systems and the principles that led you to that, that help you do that, that help you break barriers, I can apply that to my life. So I just always like, it's very important to me that I share with people that your message and who you are is super valuable. When you learn how to package it and talk about it the right way, it, it changes lives. All right, so let, let's jump in. John said, would you suggest a personal development coach first rather than getting a speaking coach? It depends what your goals are, right? Like if you're like, yo, I can't get out the couch because I'm super depressed. And I'm not saying that you are depressed. I'm just getting, giving an example. Like if you can't get out of the bed because you're super depressed, then yeah, you probably need a personal development coach hundred percent because if you're not at a place where you're like i like am willing to take action then yeah you got to look at like if there's deep you know like psychological stuff or like therapist level stuff you 100 percent should take care of that um i would like to think that and tiny you could probably talk to this better than i can that like a lot of what we do is personal development because like I'm, i can lay everything out for you and i do like the system it, it's there like I'm not, i don't hide anything like now you're gonna buy my super duper plutonium system like there is no plutonium system not, that i'm no trying that. to upset yeah. it's not there it's just like here it is this is what works but it's about getting us to see things differently and change our mindsets to it and you know that's where i think i have more joy and more more i get more passionate out of that because i care about it so you will 100 percent get personal development in what we're doing but you have to really look at where you are and say if that's the only thing that i need i tend to find this is just an real thing i'm not going to say this is for everybody i tend to find personal development without a channel is a it's a waste of energy like just believe in myself but believe in myself to do what am i going to run a marathon okay i can channel my personal development into that marathon believe in myself to do what to impact people okay, I want to do it through speaking. I can channel all of these personal development things about taking risks, believing in yourself, taking action, growth mindset, and funnel it. So no matter what you do, you have to have a channel for where you're funneling your personal development. If you don't, you just read books and listen to tapes and do nothing. Yeah, get motivated. So we have another question. Jazz, how do you know of what you have to say um, people want to hear it and will pay you for it? So basically, how do you validate your topic? Are there other speakers who speak on it? It's very simple, right? Like if there are other speakers out there who speak on your subject, that's the greatest news. People go, oh, someone else already speaks on it. Tanya's accountability partner speaks on money management. Like th there's, there's so much out there. There's, there's no scarcity in this world. So one, if there's other speakers who already speak on what you speak about, that's a great indication that they're getting booked on it. 
Uh, the second thing is, can you package what you speak about under one of those umbrellas that people do pay for? For example, leadership, success, people pay for that already, right? So if you can take what you're doing and not change really anything about it, but put a, a wrapping paper and bow so that it falls under leadership, that's a really, really great strategy as well. So a lot of times it's about that, just figuring out what is your specific message and then putting it under that. Yeah, because financial, I talk about financial literacy, but when I'm speaking at a college, it's more so a life skill. It's helping people. So it's, it's packaged under life skills and success skills so that when they graduate from college, they'll be more successful. They'll contribute to the alumni base. Um, they'll have, a, you know, they'll reflect highly on the school. They'll actually be able to manage their money better and they won't feel their college experience was a waste. So they're more likely to give back and they're more likely to be a good reflection of the school. So it's a life skill. It's not just me talking about money management. So like that's yeah. how we package it. Um, Frederick's asked again, um, he gets overwhelmed by a lot of information was the first thing you should do in the simplest form. Is it, do a free speaking engagement and get images and start to build out the website or is it just like join tss and like go through the process this, like frederick the simplest thing right now and i know frederick so like i can speak to frederick specifically because i know i know frederick right he has a really like awesome beard by the way so if you want to look up a very glorious beard look up frederick's beard right <laughs> you you need to leverage your current network right you're an educator Contact your current network and say, I want to come in to speak for free on this subject. Let's set something up. Who can do it? Do you have a class? Do you have a student group? Do you have a connection to a high school? And you need to do the presentation and get pictures and get videos of you speaking, video testimonials, and put that together on a website. You already have that. And I think anything for you, for you, Frederick, anything other than that, you're overcomplicating it. Mm. That's the only thing I would do if I were you. That's okay. it. Don't do anything else. Got it. Moving in. Someone says, could you discuss the writing a book portion a bit more? I would actually add to that, Thaymar. So um, my book became an Amazon seller and, um, and that weekend, the weekend I launched it, and it's because I used Arel's formula for how to have a bestseller in um, 48 hours. So it was like, he didn't even, it wasn't necessarily just about writing the book. It was how to market it, how to list it on Amazon, how to solicit your first reviews, how to solicit, like, you know, get someone to um, provide like that commentary. I forgot what it, what it is, but like, yeah, you want to share a little bit more about what they get in the writing a book portion. Yeah. So what we do is, is we talk about a lot of times people think you got to spend like seven years writing a book. You, you don't. Many of you, like, I'll give you a little tip, right? You, do you do a speaking engagement? Do you got 60 minutes of content? Go ahead and transcribe it and you got 80% of your book done, right? So like there's little things like that that can speed up the, the overall process. So we show you about how to organize your ideas, how to get your ideas down, how to package the book, how to market the book so that you can sell it, where are the best vendors to get the best pricing, best quality, how to save money on the whole process if you're self-publishing. If you want to submit it to a publisher, we show you how to do that. If you want to work with a boutique publisher, we show you how to do that. There's three different modules in it as well. So we give you all of that so that you can move from, like, if you start today, you can have a book out in 2020 that's getting you booked to speak by following what's in that. So that's kind of what's in it. Yes. Nadia asked, what are other examples of being credible? Media mentions, uh, local media, right? You don't have to be on the cover of Black Enterprise Magazine, right? It doesn't hurt, of course, but like get, get your local media and then put up images of that. Get pictures with successful people, right? So if you're at an event and, oh, snap, LeBron James is there, get a picture with LeBron James, put it up on your site. Don't say I'm hanging out with my best friend, LeBron James. You're lying. Just like me and LeBron James. And people are like, oh, Credible, LeBron. Like, how, how could you possibly get in with LeBron James unless you're credible? It's because I was at a charity event. He was taking pictures with everybody, and I took a picture too. Right? Well, That's what he had to do. So, but they don't need to know that, right? Exactly. So credibility and a good resource to, for media mentions is Haro. H A R O. I think I don't know if it's Haro.org or dot com. Help a reporter out. Yep. Help a reporter out. That is how I got my first placements when I started my Fab Finance. Um, usually reporters, if they need, they need um, subjects or they need a source for an article that they're writing, they send it, they upload it to Harrow. You get an email in the morning and the evening of all the reporters who need a source to speak on whatever article they're writing. You respond back to them. You send them an email. A lot of times what I do is I'll put like my points that I would put in the article back. I'll say, hey, 
saw you had an inquiry. These are the things that I would suggest for a mother to do if she was having issues with her child's teething. That's just like what came to mind. And I was like, my name is Tanya Rapley. You can my, um, tanyarapley.com. Let me know if you have any future questions. A lot of times, all they have to do is copy and paste that um, tip that I gave into their article, make it easy for them. I get an easy media mention, adds to my credibility. So I don't do that anymore, but that's what I did when I first was getting started. And that's how I got like US News, um, Diversity Woman, like a bunch of publications to give me credible mentions. Cool. Um, so another person asked, if I'm in management in corporate America and also run a life coaching practice, which one should I tailor my speaking topics around? You have to decide, is it more important for you right now to get coaching clients or is it, do you want to get paid to speak? Because those are two different things, right? Like if you're a coaching uh, life coach, you want to speak for free and then upsell people into your coaching program, which is a different business model than speaking for a fee. I personally like speaking for a fee because it's guaranteed money, right? Like I walk in, I know I'm leaving with thousands of dollars. If I get anything else out of that, that that's cherry on top. So if you have a lot of money and you, you're good, then you, you can do the speak to get the coaching clients if you want. Sure. If you're like, yo, I'd love to stack up some of my reserves and get some more cash. I would encourage you to focus on speaking for a fee first because that gets you money now where the speaking and selling in the back of the room can get you money for sure, but there's a lot more variables involved. And it will only be strengthened by you knowing how to speak well in general. Like that, your, mm -hmm. ad, your offer will only be strengthened by you being um, a dynamic speaker or knowing how to transform your audience and take them to that journey to where they are buying your package. So I, I around, you're right. And I, she said she is a, she is upper management of corporate America. I think there's a corporate America hires people to speak. I think honestly, more than life coaches, I think that oh, yeah. the corporate America angle is the profitable angle to go because that's who has the money. Like when I think when who pays me, like these little, like, and I don't want to talk down on them, but these women empowerment conferences you see on Instagram or like these it girl events. I mean, even summit 21, I didn't get paid to speak at summit 21. So even things like that, those don't typically pay. And that's typically who's hiring a life coach. What really, get, what really gets the dollars is when you speak with corporations or for corporations and so forth. So I would really tweak it to like, sometimes people want to be popular instead of profitable. And yes, you can speak at the popular girl event, but is it a profitable opportunity for you? Because a lot of times the profit comes in the organization that no one's ever heard of, but they paid you $15,000 to come lead a workshop. I'm gonna have to pause you right there. Tanya, do you, is that your phrase? Some people rather be popular than profitable? No, but I can post it later. You, you need to, that's a damn good phrase right there. Don't copy it around. Don't, nobody else who's on here. <laughs> See, this is the um, thing. Whenever I talk to Tanya, she be saying stuff. I'd be like, yo, Tanya, hold up. You just said some dopeness right now. And she's <laughs> riffing. Like people do this all the time when I talk to them. They riff and they say some dopeness. And I'm like, that was dope. All right, Tanya, let's take one more question before we wrap up. Okay, we just say one more question. And actually, I'm gonna ask the I'm gonna answer the question um, that came from a Q and A because the person did this. Oh, Jazz, Jet, we already answered that. Um, yeah, let me try to get someone else who didn't. We didn't answer their question. Um, Cleo says I had a nonprofit organization reach out to me um, and ask my rate to speak to teach a yoga workshop and a financial workshop, wellness, but two different areas. Would you have different rates for nonprofit versus businesses and colleges? That's a great question. So do you have different rates for nonprofits and um, businesses, college, et cetera? Yeah. So what you do is you have your, your normal fee and you say, this is what my, yeah, my speaking honorarium is. At that point, they're either going to fall out of the chair and go, oh my God, how can you charge so much? And then you work with them, right? So you say, listen, because you're a nonprofit, I'm more than happy to scale back because I love the mission. Right. So that's usually what I do. I'll start at my normal rate and then I'm always willing to scale back if it's a good cause. Right. If you have no idea what to charge, just do what I call the ball in the court. The ball is in your court. Mm -hmm. I go, listen, I want to make this work for you. I understand you have a budget. Would you mind sharing with me in round numbers what your ideal budget is for a speaker? And at that point, they go, oh, we got like three to seven thousand. Okay, then from, from I was, by the way, my little thing, this is just an real thing, I encourage you to do it. If someone ever goes, well, we're hoping between 2,500 and 3,500, 
If I'm willing to do it, I always say, okay, cool, 3,500. What most people do is they say, okay, cool, 2,500. But if they say 25 to 35, always go to the highest side, right? It's much, there's a whole deep psychological thing about why it's important. I can't get into that right now, but always do that. So you just put the ball in their court, let them get back to you. If they don't say, you know, I don't know, just tell us what it is, then quote the fee that you, you think you should quote and then work from there. Um, yeah, that ball in court is critical. I've almost taught myself, I've almost lowballed myself. And now I was like, what's your, uh, what, what did you have in mind? They're like 10,000. I was going to quote them 5,000. They were like 10,000. I was like, yeah, we can do that. I can make it work. You know, I can make that work. And I've I done that. Told me, I've done it. Like, how, what is, I've done that. And people said numbers way high. And like, you saying Ty. And I was like, thank God I ain't say no stupid. Say my number. Yeah. Oh, like, I can make it work. And I do want to add, um, when I do discount people, and I know, Aurel, I think you and I talked about this. When I discount people, I make sure I notate it on their invoice. And so if I, if I'm discounting them, you know, if I, my speaking fee is 10,000 and I'm discounting it, you know, $7,500, I will put a line item that says, discount negative 7500 so they can actually see how much of a discount they're getting even if we don't talk about the discount i'm going to put it on there so they see what kind of value they're getting um and that way they come back to you and they want that discount be like that was a one-time discount actually i can do five thousand off this time or my rates have since increased you taught me this my rates have since increased but i can give you a forty five hundred dollar discount like that allows them to see like you got a deal basically you need them to see that they got a deal because if, if, if you don't make them see it, they're just going to think that's normal. Yeah. And then you set yourself up for failure. Yeah. Exactly. So they, start listen, telling listen. People, they start telling people that you can prevail for this <laughs> price. You don't want <laughs> so Taya, put the link in one more time. Do you have the link for the... So for those of you, this is... You can go on the page, see what it's worth. I encourage you to take a look at it, make the decision that you think is best. Um, I would love to love to help you more in this context and go specifically into stuff for you. Tanya, thank you for having me here. It is, um, it is a pleasure to see you giving back. And um, I, my goal, I told Tanya, for those of you watching this, I told Tanya my goal was to make this free webinar more valuable than most people's paid stuff. Yeah. So hopefully we achieved that goal. I don't know if we did. You let me know in the comments. What did you feel? Did you think this was worth your time? Give me some type of feedback because I'm talking to Tanya and you're watching, but I have no idea what you're feeling because this is not a live presentation. So yeah, get... it was it was amazing. I'm I'm getting text messages. People are sending me messages like, "Oh my God, that was amazing." So Aurel, thank you. You know you're one of my favorite people. Um, you you just continue to deliver. You continue to deliver value. And one of the things I've loved, I took TSS two years ago. I I was in the TSS program two years ago. Even now, like I came back from maternity leave, and I was like, I'm a little rusty. I dug into my module, like as I did my returning from maternity leave um, speech and so forth. And like, as I plan things out, like I can still go and access, or I need to update my contracts, or I need to do this, or I need, because you get contracts, like you actually get the contracts that you use and everything. And I still have access to it. And so it's still providing value, even though I did it a few years ago. Um, so Ralph, thank you so much for being such a value and such okay. an incredible person on my journey in my life. And I know that you're going to um, serve everybody else and thank you all for showing up and you know choosing yourself tonight and choosing to spend time with us and I'm looking forward to the transformations and looking forward to the money that's made as a result of being here tonight let's do it and I'll leave you with my my favorite quote that I like to say because it's cheesy and I think Oscar Wilde said it and I really like it uh, he said be yourself because everyone else is taken so goddamn be you boo boo <laughs> All right, y'all, you have a good night. Karis is on his way back over here, so I'm on mommy duty. But thank you all so much for rolling through. And replay will be coming out. And um, around. thank you. Thank you. Bye.